After stalk shredding, fertilizer application, and chisel plowing, Warsaw and the Saybrook silt loam will rest for the next several months. In the late fall and early spring, rains will move water, organic matter, and nutrients deep into the soil profile, recharging the root zone for the next summer's crop. When the spring down the road dries up, it's time, says Herman Warsaw, to plant corn. But planting, too, has become quite a different operation since Warsaw embarked on his campaign to rebuild his soil through high yields. It's all part of the ongoing cycle now. Deep chisel plowing creates a deep root zone. The deeper root zone, with its increased water holding capacity, calls for higher nutrient levels. That combination supports increased plant populations. And in the waiting fields, there's a sponginess which tells the soles of your feet that something here is different. If we pull a chunk of this soil up and take a closer look at it, you can see channels where the root system from last year's corn crop was and has decayed and left these openings. These are channels through which water and nutrients can move, and the new roots for this next year's crop will have a ready-made channel that they can grow down as well. <clears throat> Breaking this open, you can see the structure is pretty well developed. The clods break apart on fairly flat planes. Inside we see more fine root systems, channels where roots have died and moved away, possibly some earthworm channels, and bits and pieces of organic matter, the brown material and the organic matter level is uh, very important to me, especially in past years. I found out that it's, it changes the soil structure in itself. In uh, being able to get better water infiltration, a water holding capacity, and also in breaking down the, the chemical fertilizers in the soil, making them available plant to plants, which is is not the thing that you do when you get this fertilizer out of the, the bag the way it is. And uh, it makes the soil more tillable. It has so many values in soil building and productivity that it's just hard to rule it out anywhere in the whole business of working with soils. Like many farmers, Warsaw has nitrogen custom applied. But he uses no guesswork in deciding how much to apply. Constant and careful soil testing means that Warsaw always knows exactly what his soil needs. Usually in our report, reports we get back from our um, uh, soil test have some recommendations on it according to uh, what uh, type of yield you're expecting to produce. Sometimes we have to change that a little bit because maybe we're shooting for higher yields than what they think they're producing. Especially most of your uh, uh, recommendations come out for average farmers. And if you think you're above average, well, you'll have to make your own uh, changes in that respect. We know usually about how much uh, phosphorus and uh, potassium it takes to produce, uh, say, a given yield of corn, and uh, if the tests that we get back are figured lower than that, why, we just uh, figure it out from there. We know it takes so many more pounds to produce that much more corn of uh, both potassium and phosphorus and nitrogen as well. And it isn't too hard to calculate that out. You can do it with a, just a little hand calculator very easily. After the nitrogen, another pass incorporates it along with pre-plant herbicide. The fine surface soil is laced with shredded plant material. With his soil in this condition, Warsaw feels he would be wasting its potential to plant the customary populations. It's all part of the system, and the greater the density of the crop, the greater the protection of the soil. We have some that are running all the way up to 34, 35,000 plants per acre compared to what most farmers are running between 18 and 20,000. 
the first thing most people ask you is, why don't you plant all your corn that thick? Well, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> it simply, uh, simply wouldn't work out because there's a lot of risk involved. And even when you get up to 35,000 plants per acre, there's still some risk involved that we haven't worked out perfectly that I would say that uh, everybody should plant that high. Fertility is very important, and um, we found out it's uh, even more important uh, in coping with some of these uh, risk in uh, high populations that uh, you must have a very good balanced fertility level and also that uh, certain types of fertilizer uh, are very important in resisting the crop's resistance to uh, lodging, which is one of the greatest problems today in trying to produce high yields like that, especially when you're talking of the upper 200 and 300 bushel levels, that lodging is still the greatest problem, just about harvest time. As I told them, tell people occasionally when they ask the question, why don't you plant the whole farm that way? I said, uh, how would you like to harvest 400 acres of lodged corn? <laughs> this is what's uh, rated as a no-till planter. Uh, but you're not a no-till farmer. No. Uh, it does have some advantages, though, that you don't have on the uh, other planters, and uh, particularly the uh, no-till coders on it. That helps prepare a better seed bed just ahead of the uh, seed openers. It isn't long before the accuracy of Warsaw's planting is observable. When rows are 28 inches apart, 18 feet 6 inches of row equals 1 1,000th 1 of an acre. The uh, spacing would be about 6.6 .6 in the row, spacing between kernels. And what yield does that produce, what population does that produce? That would produce about 30, uh, actually planting that would, uh, should give you 34,000, 6.6, uh, 33,900 to be exact. <laughs> Today while you're here and uh, we're taking, uh, cultivating corn, basically not for weed control, but uh, more or less to aerate the soil and uh, incorporate more of the crop residue in it uh, back into the soil, releasing some of that, uh, uh, I'd say recycling the uh, crop from last year, getting some of the plant food back out of it uh, for the rest of the growing season and using up that residue by the time the next crop has matured. This is very important to us. It's very important to us to get more water down into the soil. By aerating the soil, whenever we do get the rain, why the uh, water will replace the air pockets in the soil. It'll hold that much more water for that growing crop, which is very important, especially if we get some dry uh, air periods uh, later in the season. But uh, in this soil testing and this work that we've been doing, uh, we want to know if we're getting things out of balance and how far we're out of balance. We when July to... rolls around and again during the winter months, Warsaw takes up teaching. Farmers from around the state and nation and food producers and scientists from distant parts of the world come to Herman to see and hear about his system of combining high yields with soil conservation and improvement. I think we're on the right track here if we can continue to make this thing work because in the last two or three years, we've had less and less. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has arranged several speaking tours for Herman in this country, and he was one of the American representatives at the World Food Conference in New Delhi in 82. Throughout government and industry, there are researchers and educators who accept Warsaw as a valuable peer. His work has influenced the direction of some very important agricultural research. Two basic things we're doing here. One, we're conducting a breeding program trying to develop germplasm pools which we can develop inbred lines from in the future that will be adapted to these high yield environments like Herman has here. And the second thing is we're testing out hybrids, 
sold by commercial companies and also some developed from our breeding program in this particular environment. He does have a very good knowledge of how the corn plant functions, how it grows, and what it has to have in order to produce high yields. He seems to, I'm not quite sure where he's gained all this information. I think a lot of it has come from experience and observation out here in the field, but he certainly is, seems to be a cut above the average. I guess it's his inquisitive and open mind plus the fact that he's out there, he studies his fields. He tries things, and then he can observe their reaction right away. So he's out there looking at all angles in crop production and corn production in this particular case. The effect that uh, his cropping practices, soil management practices, have had on the soil, I think that's been one of the big things that have influenced uh, researchers to see uh, what it takes to, uh, in other situations, to get the kind of yields and the kind of soil effects.